read the lectures on the Christian sacraments by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, the fifth mystagogical catechesis on the Eucharistic liturgy. The reading is from the cast the reading is from the Catholic Epistle of Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile and slander, and the following. By the loving kindness of God for humankind, you have heard sufficiently in the previous gatherings concerning baptism and chrismation and communion of the body and blood of Christ. But now it is necessary to pass on to the following. Today, placing the crown needed to complete your spiritual building. You saw then the deacon give water for washing to the priest, i.e. the bishop and to the presbyters of God standing around the altar. He did not give this on account of bodily dirt. It is not for this, for no one first enters the church having bodily dirt on themselves. But washing is a symbol of the need for you to be cleansed from all sins and unlawful acts. For insomuch as the hands are the symbol of our acts, in washing them we are demonstrating the pure sig significance and blamelessness of our actions. Have you not heard Blessed David's mystagogical explanation of this, saying, I will wash my hands in innocence and walk around your altar, O Lord? So then, the washing of the hands is a symbol of the need to be guiltless of sin. Next, the deacon cries out, Receive one another and let us kiss one another. Stop thinking that this kiss is like the usual kiss shared by common friends in the market. This is not that. But this kiss mixes souls together and removes them, moves from them the memory of every wrong. The kiss, then, is a sign of the mixing of the souls and the banishing of every wrong. Regarding this, Christ, regarding this, Christ said, If you offer your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go first and be reconciled to your brother, and then, coming, offer your gift. Therefore, this kiss is reconciliation and, on account of this, holy. For as blessed Paul cried out, saying, Greet one another with a holy kiss, and Peter, greet one another with a kiss of love. 4. After this the priest cries out, Lift up your hearts. For truly in that awe-filled hour it is necessary to have our, hearts lift, lift, uh, li have our hearts up toward the Lord, and not below with regard to the earth and earthly activities. For this reason the priest exhorts you with authority in that hour to leave behind all everyday cares and household worries and to have your hearts in heaven with the God who is the lover of humanity. Next you answer, We have lifted them to the Lord. Having made by this, having made by this your agreement with him according to what you confessed, let not such a one enter who with the mouth says, We have lifted them up to the Lord but whose thoughts in his mind are focused on everyday cares. Always then keep God in mind, but if on account of human weakness you are not able to do this, try to do it especially at that hour. This uh, brings to remembrance uh, what Jesus said about prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. Next the priest says, Let us give thanks to the Lord, for rightly we are bound to give thanks. That he, is, that he has called us, being unworthy, to such great grace, that being enemies, he has reconciled us, and he has made us worthy of the spirit of divine adoption. Once again, he's running through um, our Father. He's running through the Our Father here. Next you say, It is right and just, for by our giving thanks we do a right and just thing. But our benefactor did not do only a just thing but more than just by making us worthy of such great love. 6. After this we make memorial of heaven and earth and sea, heaven and earth and sea, of the sun and the moon, the stars and all creation, both rational and irrational, visible and invisible, of angels, archangels, dominions, principalities, powers, thrones, and cherubim with many faces, saying with authority as in David, Magnify the Lord with me. We make memorial also of the seraphim, whom by the Holy Spirit Isaiah saw encircling the throne of God, with two wings covering the face, with two the feet, and with two flying, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth. For on account of this given to us from the seraphim, we recite this theology of God, having become sharers in the hymnity of the heavenly armies. Next, having sanctified ourselves with these spiritual hymns, we call upon God, the lover of humanity, to send the Holy Spirit upon the offerings lying before him, that he may make the bread 
the body of Christ, and the wine the blood of Christ. For truly, whatever the Holy Spirit has touched is sanctified and changed. So the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That's the coming of the Spirit. Kingdom come on earth. Like Maximus says, is the coming of the Spirit onto the gifts. On earth as it is in heaven. And the very next line is, Give us this day our daily bread. Give daily bread. That bread, the super substantialis, is given by the kingdom coming to earth, which is the Holy Spirit. Next, after the spiritual sacrifice has been perfected, the bloodless worship we call upon God through the sac that sacrifice of propitiation for the common peace of the church for the well-being of the world, for kings, for armies, for allies, for those in sickness, for those for those in affliction, and in general, for all who are in need of our help. Of help, we pray and offer this sacrifice. Next, we make memorial and commemoration of those who have fallen asleep before us, first patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, and martyrs, so that by their prayers and intercessions God might receive our petition. Next, for the Holy Fathers and the bishops who have fallen asleep before us, and in general, for all who have fallen asleep before us, believing great profit will come to, to the souls for whom the petition is made as this, as this holy and awful sacrifice is being presented. So this is all contained within the giving of the bread. And I want to persuade you by means of an example, for I know many who say, How can a soul receive profit after having left this world, either with or without sins, if it is remembered in prayer? But surely if a king had made exiles out of certain people who had given him offense, and then their relatives wove a crown and offered it to him for those in need of help, would he not give them relief from their punishments? In the same way also, offering our petitions to God for those who have fallen asleep, although they are sinners, we do not weave crowns, but we offer Christ slaughtered for our sins, propitiating God, the lover of humanity, for them and for ourselves. Next, after these things, you pray that prayer, you pray that prayer. After these things, you pray that prayer, which the Savior gave to his own disciples, with a pure conscience, claiming God as Father. God as Father deification, adoption as sons, saying, Our Father, the one in the heavens. So, our Father close to us, the one in the heavens, exalted above, O most surpassing God, lover of humanity, to those who turned away from him and were in the deepest sins, God has given such forgiveness of their evil acts and participation in even greater grace. That is, to be able to call God Father. Our Father in the heavens. And they are also heavens who bear the image, and they are also heavens who bear the image of the heavenly, in whom God is dwelling and walking. So they are also heavens, even in the earth, who bear the image of the heavenly, in whom God is dwelling and walking. Let your name be holy. Let your name be holy. The name of God is holy in its nature. There it is. The name of God is holy in its nature, whether we say so or not. But since among sinners there are times when it is profaned according to the words, though you my name is through you my name is profaned always among the nations, we pray that the name of God may be made may be holy in us. The name of God may be holy in us, set apart in us, not that it comes to be holy from not being holy but that it becomes holy in us as we, becoming holy, also do those things worthy of holiness. Let your kingdom come. It is the pure soul who can say with confidence, let your kingdom come. For the one who has heard Paul saying, stop letting sin rule in your mortal body, and is himself pure in act, intention, and word, can say to God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. On earth as in heaven. The divine and blessed angels of God do the will of God. So there's the angels. As, as David said in the Psalms, Bless the Lord, all his angels, powerful and strong, who do his word. So praying this with authority, you say, As by the angels your will is done, O Lord, let it be done also on earth by me, by us. Give us this day our super substantial bread. The bread that is common is not super substantial. But this holy bread is super substantial. 
on account of which it is ordered to the substance of the soul. For this bread does not go into the stomach to be passed out into the latrine, but it goes into every part of your being for the advantage of both body and soul. And by today, quote today, he means every day. As also Paul has said, as long as it is called today, Hebrews 13, 3.13, So this, as long as it is called today, line in Hebrews is referring to not falling away from partaking of Christ that we have been granted, partaking in in the nature of Christ. And so um, it's fitting here since um, give us this day, today, because it's always today that we have the opportunity to partake of of Christ, Um, not for the future. and yet, it's also in the future the same body that we partake of. Um, and so there's a unification of the, of the present and the future eschatological meaning. If you think of the bread, the super substantial bread that's mentioned here by St. Cyril of Jerusalem, that is in the Greek um, as uh, speaking of the bread that is for today, but is the eternal bread that is for today, that is fitted to the substance of the soul. 16. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For we have many sins. For we stumble in word and thought, and we do many things worthy of condemnation. And if we say that we have no sin, we lie, as John says. And we have made covenants with God, calling upon him to forgive our sins, just as we also forgive the debts of our neighbors. Thinking then about what we have received and what, um, and for what, let us neither wait nor delay to forgive anyone, one another. The wrongs done against us are small and worthless and easily reconciled, but those done by us against God are great. For this and for this we can only pray for his great mercy. Proceed carefully there, lest the, therefore, lest on account of these small and worthless sins you call yourself back from God's forgiveness of your costly sins. That's just recapitulating what every... Um, even lead us not to temptation or uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors Um, because once you've had the bread if you cease to give bread to others after you've had the substance that bread which is fitted to the substance of your soul which is such a beautiful phrase the bread that is fitted to the substance of your soul and then you turn around and refuse to give people the bread that is not fitted to the substance of their soul but merely is the bread that you're holding over them as a debt, then you'll lose the bread that is fitted to the substance of your soul. You'll reject it. So do not, so do not reject that bread by for refusing to forgive the debts. And do not lead us into temptation, O Lord. Does not the Lord then teach us to pray that we never be tempted? How then is it said elsewhere that the one who is not tempted is unproven? Tried, tried. The one who is not tried is unproven. And again, regard it as all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various kinds of temptations. The word is trials. But perhaps entering into temptation is being drowned by the temptation. For the temptation is like a certain winter river with a difficult crossing. Some then cross it, not being drowned, since they have become the best swimmers and are not pulled under by the waters. But others, who are not the best swimmers, enter and are drowned. Just as, for example, Judas, who having entered into the trial, entered into the temptation, of avarice did not pass through but was drowned and choked both physically and spiritually peter entered into the temptation of denial but having entered it he was not drowned but passed through it with courage and was delivered from the temptation listen again in another place to the chorus of healthy saints giving thanks for having been delivered from temptation you O god have tested us you have tried us in fire and silver in fire as silver is tried you brought us into the net you placed suffering on our back and let men ride over our heads we came through fire and water and and you brought us into a place of refreshment you see them speaking confidently about passing without being drowned and you brought us to into a place of refreshment to be brought into a place of refreshment is to be delivered from temptation So let us not fall back into the time before we received the super substantial bread. But deliver us from evil. If the petition, evil one, 
If the petition do not lead us into temptation, may never being tempted, he would not have said, but deliver us from the evil one. And evil is the demon. So the evil one is the demon opposing us. Okay, so he knows it's the evil one. For whom? For whom we pray to be set free. That's the one. Next, after the completion of the prayer, you say, Amen. Sealing by Amen, which means, let it be. The petitions of this divinely taught.